What up? I'm Rob and this is Combat Self Defense. And in another video, I talked about following up a roundhouse kick with a lead leg side kick. And while I do think that's a valuable combination, I realize that not every style includes a side kick. Most styles have a front kick and a roundhouse kick, but not everybody has a side kick. So, since y'all seem to like tutorials so much, I decided I was going to do an in depth breakdown of the lead leg side kick. Before we get started, I would appreciate it if you went ahead and subscribed and tapped the notification bell. That way, you never miss a new video. To properly talk about the lead leg side kick, we should first talk about the more popular one, the lead leg push kick, because they're both basically the same kick. From my more traditional kickboxing stance, I'm going to bring my rear foot underneath my head. From there, my lead leg comes up at 90 degrees, and then I'm just going to stab the ball of my foot right in the center of mass of my opponent. Once again, I'm here, bang. As you can imagine, the goal with this kick is to push your opponent away from you. The side kick is the exact same thing, except obviously delivered from the side. So now I'm here in more of my sideways karate stance, and once again, I'm going to bring the rear heel underneath my head. You can do this a few different ways. You can lean back over the foot, or as we're going to do right now, bring the foot right underneath the head. Then from there, the mechanics are the same again. I'm going to bring the knee straight up and drive now the heel into my opponent. You can kick a few different ways. You can use the blade of the foot, as some people prefer. You can use the whole foot, or as we're going to do right now, you can use the heel. I prefer using the heel on the bag, just because I feel I can deliver the most power from this position. However, when I'm doing it with a partner, I tend to use the whole foot because I have a little bit more control in that instance. I like bringing the leg straight up and shooting it out because I feel that's a little bit faster. However, if you need to put more power into the kick, you can chamber it diagonally across your body, which looks like this. Across and then out. You can hear on the bag that sounds differently because I'm now able to add some rotation from the hip and then whip it back at the opponent. So my options are, I'm here, I lift the leg up and out, or I come here across and then out. What I want to avoid is teetering my head too far to the side. Now, if you have good mobility, you can throw the kick with your head completely straight up, and that's great. If you don't have the best mobility, you can allow your head to move. I prefer to do this because I'm not necessarily the tallest person, so just because my side kick, which is my longest kick, lands, that doesn't mean I'm not getting hit. So I'll pull my head out of the way to make space for my hip and also protect me from oncoming strikes. When I throw my side kick, I extend through the knee. To retract it, I just reverse that motion, which looks like this. Once again here, the leg comes up, out, comes back in, and down. On the bag, that looks like this. As with all of our strikes, we need to be aware of the follow through. Because I don't want to throw the side kick and then fall straight forward, open to oncoming attacks from my opponent. But I also don't want to throw the kick and have it push me backwards. I need to be as aware of what I'm doing after the kick as I am when I'm doing the kick. Last thing we need to talk about when it comes to our legs is what our posting side leg is doing. Because from here, without any rotation of the posting leg, I can throw a pretty good side kick. That's decent. However, if I want to add maximum power potential, I want to rotate this foot from 3 o'clock all the way to 6 o'clock. So from here in my stance, I bring the weight underneath, pull the knee up, and as I throw the kick, my posting foot turns, and there's my side kick. One more time with a little more speed, it comes here, again. The more your posting side foot rotates, the more you're going to add power to that strike. Now that's all what my lower body is doing. Let's talk about what the upper body is doing while we're doing this kick. My lead side arm is going to act as a counter lever to this leg. And my rear arm is going to add rotational force as well as being a guard against any counters from my opponent. So I drive my legs in, up, out, and then back to my stance. When you learn this kick in a traditional martial arts setting, you tend to pull your arm down to your ribs. And because of how far away we are from our opponent, you're probably safe. However, they might have longer legs, they might be crafty and move around that side kick, so it's better to just have the arm up here by your head. However, there is a reason they pull their arm down to their ribs. And it's because that pulling motion adds a little bit of rotation to give us even more power into the strike. And I can still do that with my hand up, which looks like this. But, I hear you say, I don't like fighting from the sideways karate stance. I learned how to fight from a kickboxing stance, where my rear hand and rear leg can be more involved. Can I still throw the lead leg sidekick? And yes, you can, you just have to do a little more work. 
because from here, the side kick is a natural extension from this position. However, from the front stance, my push kick is a natural extension. So I just have to marry those two ideas together. I bring my foot under, lift the knee, chamber over, and there, there's my side kick. It's all a function of this posting foot and this leg whipping around. Once again, it's here. Just like with all straightforward attacks, whether that be the jab, the cross, the push kick, or in our case, the side kick, I need to strike with the last three to four inches of my range. What that means is, let's talk about the cross. If I throw the cross from here, it has full power because I got full extension through my trunk. If, however, I throw the punch from here, there might be a little bit of sting on it, yeah, but it's not gonna have nearly the force that it would if it was fully extended. The same thing applies to our kicks. If I throw the side kick from here, it's really gonna be more of a push, either pushing him away or pushing me away from him. And that's not how you want the side kick to work. You want the side kick to be a stab. It comes up, out, and back as quickly as possible. So that's the mechanics of how to throw the side kick, both from the sideways karate stance and from more of a kickboxing stance. But now the question becomes, why would I throw the side kick? Particularly when we know the lead leg push kick is so much easier to throw. And let me answer that with some math. This right here is the range for my push kick. Let's say I'm about two and a half feet away from my opponent. Maybe a little bit farther, I don't know, we're gonna say two and a half feet. Now, when I throw my side kick, I can actually be a little bit farther away. Not by much, just a couple of inches, maybe even a couple of centimeters, but that range matters. Because now I can be farther away from a taller opponent and still make that kick work, which I don't have the option for when throwing the push kick. And also, because of the range of the push kick, because of the way it's thrown, I'm right here in front of my opponent, which means if he snuffs that leg, I'm still here getting shots. However, when I throw the side kick, I'm so far away from him that even if he starts countering me, it's gonna be that much easier for me to move out of the way and defend myself. The other reason I like throwing the lead leg side kick is because it's a very good kick to do as a retreating kick. What I mean by that is let's say I go jab, cross, hook, roundhouse kick, and land essentially in the sideways stance. From here, I can try to reset back to my stance, or I can capitalize on the position and fire off my side kick. Once again, it looks like this. One, two, three, kick, bam, boom. Again, one, two, three. You can do this combination a couple different ways. You can go one, two, three, four, five, or you can capitalize on this being a mistake, let your opponent come in and walk in your side kick. Either way works. Earlier, I described bringing the foot underneath the head and then throwing the side kick from more or less a stationary position. And that's great if you're in range to strike your opponent and you're happy with the power you can deliver from this position. However, what if we're slightly out of range or we want to add just a little more power to that strike? In that case, I'm going to do the slide that's so common in karate and taekwondo styles. What that slide is doing is giving me a little more rotation and even more snap into my strike. As I shoot my leg out, my posting foot is gonna slide across the floor. I'm not just rotating it, I'm skipping across. This is not unlike when I'm here trying to throw my cross and I push off the ground to reach forward with a little more range. Again, I'm just pushing here. It's the same thing for my kick. So instead of being here and missing my opponent, I'm gonna shoot the ball of my foot towards them and add a little more sting to it. What I wanna be careful of is that I don't slide my heel too far past my head. Because if I do that, now I'm off balance. So it's just a little tiny slide, maybe two or three inches. But those two or three inches add a lot more power to the strike. Let's talk about targets with the side kick. If we're talking about sparring, you can aim anywhere at the center of mass, meaning you can strike your opponent in the stomach, or if you're off to the side, you can aim it more at the ribs. And if you have the flexibility, you can also throw it straight at the head. But again, if we're talking about sparring, be careful with those headshots. Now, if we're talking self-defense, I think the low leg side kick is the best leg kick because what I'm doing now is essentially stomping right into my opponent's knee. Now, this isn't gonna look like it looks like in the Kung Fu movies where the knee bends backwards. However, if you land this in the quad or right above the kneecap, that can be devastating. So, our targets with this kick are gonna be low to the leg or center of mass to the body or if you work on your flexibility like you should be, up to the head. Boom, there you go everything you could possibly want to know about the lead leg sidekick. 
unless there's more you want to know, in which case I get to make another video. But you guys, I know the sidekick might be intimidating to some people, or they might feel that it doesn't work, and they're wrong by the way, but really, the sidekick is just a different version of the lead leg push kick, and we all throw lead leg push kicks. So this is just a variant, and maybe it's one that would work for you. And if you've never thrown a sidekick before, and now you feel like you have the confidence to start practicing them, please, go ahead and film a video, send it to the email that's attached in the comment section because I'd love to see you guys practicing what I'm showing you. And on that note, if you guys are looking for a channel that combines the practicality of combat sports with the reality of self-defense and the fun of traditional martial arts, then please go ahead and subscribe, tap the notification bell, drop a like, share the video with your friends. All that support really helps me out. As always, I want to thank you guys for the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time. Let's get to sidekicking.